Hey everybody, how's it going? So I did some focus groups a while back, and what we learned is that the security argument was the anti-right to repair argument that seemed to land best with voters. They, uh, they, they agreed with the manufacturer the most on that point, and that was the point at which it would be the easiest to get your average consumer or voter to say no to right to repair. So I think it's really important that we address this from the standpoint of who is fixing your device. And this is something that came up in this Business Insider article recently. So when you go to the authorized repair center, typically you are dealing with a person who is then going to give the device to somebody else who sends it to a contractor, who then goes to a staffing agency, who then goes to the person that's actually going to fix your product. And that was outlined here from Business Insider. An Apple customer is several subcontractors away from actually repairs the device. Apple, then CSAT, then a staffing agency, than the technician. Whereas when you go to an independent repair shop, very often you're speaking to the person that's actually going to do the job. Or even if you're not speaking to the person who's going to do the job, often the person that's going to do the job is sitting 10 feet away from the person that you're talking to. And if you want to talk to them or you have some questions for about that individual, you can have that answered on the spot. You know the location that your repair is taking place and you know who's going to work on it, even if you go into a really small shop. If anything, when you go to a small shop, you have a greater ability to understand who is actually doing the work because they're less likely to have th these many layers just because they don't have the money to have this many layers between them and the person doing the actual repair. The person you meet is the person who's going to be dealing with your ticket and dealing with your job. Now, let's say we go to authorized repair. You may have this many layers. Now, what happens when you have this many layers between the person you deal with and the person actually doing the repair? Sometimes you'll have people that send themselves messages from your phone that may include intimate pictures, as was featured in the Washington Post just a few years ago. Sometimes, as I laid out in this video I did two months ago, you may have the subcontractor leak a customer's sex tape, which did happen here, and I will include a link to this down below. You're not able to judge whether the person that you're dealing with is a normal person or a sick creep because you don't even get to see them because you have so many layers between you and the person doing the job again the genius bar outsources to csat who outsources to a staffing agency who then outsources to the technician you have four layers of separation here versus when you go to a local shop and I think that this is something that needs to get more attention because the element of security or the risk of security or someone doing something they're not supposed to do, that was the area where most people were willing to toss out the idea of right to repair when the manufacturer brings that up. So I think it's really important to reply to that and just kind of get this in front of as many people as possible that when you go to the authorized equipment dealer or when you go to the authorized repair center that you're not usually having the device repaired by the person who's in front of you, by the people that you can see. It's getting distilled through this system. And when something gets distilled through this system, this is what can wind up happening. They leak your sex tape. I tend to, uh, yeah, I don't use authorized repair, so I don't have to worry about all the sex tapes I have on my phone getting leaked. I actually don't have to worry about that because I don't have sex tapes on my phone. 99% of my phone are just videos of Mr. Clinton meowing at me. Mr. Clinton? Good boy. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and let me know what you think we can do regarding messaging to ensure that into the future, this point of security is not something where manufacturers get to take the high ground. Because at least as it seems so far, it seems like there are more publicized leaks of these manufacturer outsourced repair centers leaking customer data than of independent repair shops leaking the customer's data while they own the machine. And this is something that yeah, I just I, I think that if more people understood the layer upon layer upon layer upon layer uh, to, to finally get to the person that's making below minimum wage in an unair conditioned warehouse where there is literally shit all over the bathroom to fix their device, that they might have slightly less faith in authorized repair over independent repair where you get to speak to the person that is going to work on your device. You have that personal relationship that just doesn't exist when you have six layers or four layers of separation between you and the person doing the repair. That's it for today. And as always, Mr. Clinton hopes you learned something. Mr. Clinton's being a good boy. He wasn't screaming through this video. He wasn't clawing me. So he's going to get some head rubs because he's a very good boy.
He likes head rubs. He's a good Clinton. He's a very, very good Clinton. He's a very good boy. He would never leak a customer sex tape. I would actually trust him with a customer's device. I would trust him to have the customer's device and the password, and I know that he would never do anything like that because he's a good Clinton. He's a very good boy. Aww. You can't see it, but he just put his paw over my arm, and he's kind of like holding my arm. It's so cute. And he, he curls his paw around like this. See? He loves me. He's a good boy. All right. I'll see you all later.